Bueno, vamos a comenzar. Bueno, buenas tardes a todos. Eh, bienvenidos. Sí, 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 los, los jurados, los participantes, eh, los coordinadores, las coordinadoras prenden las cámaras, mejor aún. Eh, vamos a dar comienzo a esta nueva edición de Olimpiadas NERD, eh, como parte del programa público de actividades de la Escuela de Arquitectura y Estudios Urbanos de la Universidad Torcuato de Tela. Eh, sí, bien. Eh, Olimpiadas Nerd es, un, es una competencia en tiempo real de, por equipos, de equipos de estudiantes de, de ITEL Arquitectura, de la carrera de arquitectura. Es una, una competencia que eh, lleva varios años, eh, que comenzó siendo un, una forma de introducir, fomentar, eh, inducir al uso de, de ciertas herramientas y softwares, no, no solo eso, pero tenía parte de eso. Eh, y luego cuando ese objetivo se volvió, se cumplió, digamos, eh, esas herramientas se volvieron parte de, del repertorio y los, recu los recursos de, de, de los participantes, y no solo de los participantes, llegó el momento de pensar cuál era el, el paso siguiente, y el paso siguiente pensamos que era eh, poner el foco ya no solo en, en, en la herramienta, sino en, en lo que las herramientas permiten, eh, y en ese sentido, desde el 2019, eh, Joana Potap y Melissa Pomstein, que son eh, actuales docentes en, en la carrera, y han, son egresadas de, de la carrera también, eh, están coordinando la agenda que, que comenzó ese año, que es eh, The End Click o End Click, que pone el foco en, en la cantidad excesiva de clics, eh, en el sentido del de uso de una, de una técnica, de una única técnica precisa, eh, con el objetivo de diferenciar eh, un modelo arquitectónico dado. Eh, esto ahora en breve, eh, Joana y Melissa se los van a, lo, lo van a comentar y van a comentar las etapas y la, la dinámica de la competencia, el sistema de puntos, eh, las premiaciones, etc. Eh, vamos a tener un, un jurado el día de hoy que está compuesto por Mariano Gómez Luque, eh, que es profesor de proyecto en este momento en, en la carrera, Andrew Pringle, Pringle Satui, que también es profesor, en, es profesor adjunto en, en tesis, es profesor de modelos informáticos, Peter Surowest, que es profesor de proyecto, eh, y como cuarto jurado voy a estar eh, eh, yo. Y luego la, la premiación va a estar a cargo, la, la entrega de premios virtual va a estar a cargo del decano de la escuela, Ciro Nagle, eh, les agradecemos mucho por estar acá y ahora luego o de la presentación que hagan Melissa y Joana van a presentar a los, a los cuatro equipos que están entrenando hace varias semanas para esta competencia. Eh, así que sin mucho más le, le paso la palabra a Joana y a Melissa. Gracias Manuel. Eh, ahora estamos por presentar un poco eh, lo que fue el trabajo de estos tres años y a futuro y switchando un poco al inglés, dado que tenemos uno de los jurados eh, a Peter. Eh, así que, Melissa, eh, no sé si estás con las, con las matrices y después terminamos de hacer la presentación más específica del evento de hoy. Eh, sí, eh, primero antes para introducir en realidad las matrices y la, esta tercera edición, 
eh, de The End Click, voy a leer un poco el brief eh, del evento que estaba en la descripción del flyer, y ahora sí, pasamos. We, we switch to English, so we'll um, read uh, this, uh, this version, this English, English version, that says, um, The End Click, sixth edition of the Olympiads Nerd, continues the reworking of the nerd architect through a stubborn return to the intensive and systematic manual modeling, leaving behind the exuberant and defect-driven technical paraphernalia by suspending momentarily the incorporation of facilitating technologies, the nth click proposes the construction of an architecture aesthetically characterized by the obsessive succession of n clicks. The delay that the manual effort entails forces, entails forces the construction of mental efficiency valuing the precision of the operation above the emptiness of multiple possibilities. The bigger the effort they need, needed to build a process, the bigger the confidence in its potential must be. The nerd architect helms rational, economical, and culturally rich forms, making the author into a handy and flaming master of scarce resources during times of disciplinary crisis. To the nerd architect, the technical rigor is the medium through which to imagine projects click after click engendering projects of accumulation and sturdy increments, instead of projects that celebrate the immediacy and freeform compositions. Nth click seeks architectural singularity by the means of accumulation of critical mass through, through a compulsive series of operations capable of differentiating a super skyscraper model. The operations slow, slowly build up complex organizations through the concatenation of simple modeling commands. So that being the the brief of the event, I'll proceed to um, share what we call like a master plan of the of this uh, cycle. Um, are you seeing it on the screen right now? Great, so um, this is, uh, as Joanna was saying before, um, this is the third of series of uh, this cycle of the Nerd Olympics uh, out, and it's uh, like part of uh, its previous versions and uh, for, uh, next versions are, are part of this kind of matrix master plan of editions um, that could have a total of uh, eight editions. Um, as uh, Manuel was saying something before, this is like a stand against uh, um, uh, computational technologies uh, as Grasshopper, which was used uh, in the previous versions of these competitions uh, before these uh, three last years that he, he was saying. So, um, here. So this, this cycle has a relationship with uh, what were called the typologies that, uh, that were being studied in the thesis studios uh, and consist of super skyscrapers and hyperbuildings. Super skyscrapers will, will always be shown in the left side in, on, in the left page and hyperbuildings will always be shown on the right one. Um, and so the, there is like a tight, a bond between the, the cycle and the thesis studios that were previously being held at the school. Um, this on the left, we're seeing the first edition, which was held in uh, 2019 and was uh, unconsisted of di differentiating the, the um, skyscraper uh, 432 Park Avenue. The second edition, which was held last year, 2020, um, uh, what used the hyper building uh, called the stack. And this year we'll be using, we'll be um, differentiating the, the, a model uh, of the skyscraper in, uh, in New York, it, that is 111th West 57th Street. And the Peruri 88 uh, will include Peruri 88, Central Park Tower, uh, World Trade Center, Australia 108, 108, and 
uh, the hyperbuilding that gave name to the typology uh, hyperbuilding. So I was I was commenting uh, before. Um, this is a there are a series of four matrices that organize the production, uh, the the bases and the productions uh, over the years. In the in rows, you will always see um, the case study or the model. In this case, as I said before, it's four three two Park Avenue. The now this is this year's model, and uh, the next two. Um, super skyscraper models. And here you have the, as on the right side of the page, you have the stack uh, with also all the hyperbolics to come. And in this matrix on uh, the columns, you will see the stages of uh, the competition. Uh, it all, each competition is always uh, developed over four stages um, that we'll talk about later. And um, maybe it's just to comment on the differences between um, the, the different character that has been developed over it, uh, 2000, the 2000, 2019 and 2020 um, um, competitions is that maybe um, super skyscrapers usually tend more to over to create um, to create develop and be and are based on abstract um, systematic uh, elemental sy systems maybe and hyper buildings on the other hand tend to be more based on intertwined and complex system systems on the other hand so it's uh it's something that you will see here for example in what the the stages of each competition were uh, the first one is uh, for the first year was columns, whereas the first one for the second year was um, structure and uh, elevators, both uh, running in parallel. So the um, the second stage for the first year was um, slabs, and the second uh, stage for the second year was on the other hand the integration between both uh, state uh, between the both stated uh, before so it it had that um, uh, it was based more on in integrating systems rather than elemental as the first one so the other stage for the super skyscrapers was the the core and for the hyper hyper building was um, stairs and atriums, and for the super skyscraper, the last stage was partitions. Whereas for the um, for the hyper building was the relationship between the above the uh, men. And this year we will we'll, uh, get more deeply into it uh, later. But the first stage will consist of slabs. Second stage of load bearing walls. Third stage, mullions. Fourth stage, uh, circulation. Um, also, uh, the models are differentiated through a specific set of techniques, um, which on the first edition, super skyscrapers, the operations tend to be more autonomous, whereas on the second edition of hyper buildings, the operations used to be more um, relative, uh, such as uh, intersecting or weaving. Uh, and on the first one were more like simple commands of div like divide, uh, displace, rotate, and that. And this year we'll have also four operations, which are simple Rhino commands. The first one is uh, divide. The, sec the second one is displace or move actually. Um, the third one is rotate and the fourth one is scale. And lastly, um, we have a pattern, a variation pattern for those operations. Uh, it is um, the way to deploy those operations in which um, on super skyscrapers, they tend to be more uh, linear uh, organizations, whereas on the uh, hyper buildings, they tend to be more um, 
symmetric and uh, organizational patterns rather than uh, value patterns such as these. And this year we'll be working with also four, four patterns which are uh, linearly, exponentially, uh, sinusoidally, I, I think, and parabolic, parabolically. Um, and well, these are uh, finally the results, the differentiated models uh, produced each year. And as, um, as I was saying before, uh, you, you know, in the super skyscraper side, you can always see more like uh, clear progressions in the like the logic of the differentiation, whereas on the right side, hyperbuildings, um, you will be able to see more chaotic um, and juxtaposed organizations. And that is uh, the master plan for the next editions. Awesome, thanks. Uh, <laughs> and um, I'll now introduce the teams and we'll go over very quickly the event dynamic and uh, we can get going. First, we have four teams today. Uh, most of them are uh, repeating their uh, participation in the in the competition. I'm sorry if I'm saying any team name wrong. Uh, please correct me. First, all in excess: Juan Cruz Beguino, uh, Delfina Loro Meyer, Bautista Zeitler, y Pedro Huberman. Second, Cyberpunkies. Candela Barcancel, eh, Francisco de Cunto, Ignacio Moras y Nicolás Boscovoinic. Third, Fundamentals, Nicolás Codoni, Luis Fernando Dávila, Mauro Genone y Juan Manuel Fernández. And fourth and lastly, uh, Los Salvadores, Bruno Codoni, Sofía Cañadas, Camila Valerini y Lola Flores. And then going back to just basic uh, contest dynamics. Uh, the, the event actually starts earlier. We have two training sessions with the teams before getting to today. And then uh, as for the competition uh, today, it's four stages of 10 minutes of actual drawing each. After each one, they'll get uh, points from the uh, guest jury. Um, each stage, as Melissa was saying, corresponds to an architectural element of the super skyscraper. And also each stage has one team member that will draw. Uh, so each team member gets to draw once, even if uh, they're uh, in constant communication with each other. Uh, so just to reiterate, we're only using Rhino default commands no uh, grasshopper as was the previous um, version of the Olympics. Uh, they'll each get after in a minute uh, an operation and a pattern and um, all the other objects. So they'll work on one layer at a time. I will show the, the Rhino model in a minute. Uh, so they'll only work on that. And once they move on to the next stage, all geometry will be locked. Uh, so that's the basic part of it. Um, I don't know if Melissa, you have something to add. Um, maybe just that the scores go from one to five. Um, so one is the lowest and five is the highest. And each round or each stage um, will have one score, which is kept secret um from the jury so please we'll tell you uh, who can't say their score uh each time so please when you uh instead of you can give a, a comment or feedback a short feedback but you can't say the actual score so maybe send send it to us through the chat please yeah we uh, want to keep some intrigue yeah so that the winner is not revealed until the end um, and I guess that's it. Oh, and the um, just maybe for the, 
the jury that is um, it's their first time. The actual uh, the techniques consist of an operation and a model and a variation pattern, as Joanna just said, and it is going to be assigned assigned to each team um, randomly right now. So they couldn't plan or uh, what their designs are is, are going to be. So I'll very quickly show the Rhino model the teams will be using. We'll assign the techniques and uh, read a very short uh, description of the nerd architect while the teams have a few minutes to think about what they're gonna be doing today. So this is the model that they'll all be using. As uh, we were saying, there's four stages, each one of which is divided into subtypes of elements. Uh, so it's first the slabs, uh, load-bearing walls, mullions, and circulation. So that's all four of the stages we'll be seeing today. And lastly, for this part, I'll share our uh, very custom roulette. <laughs> so these are all the combinations available for today's competition. So I'll ask Melissa uh, for a random number between three and 18, which is uh, each page. Uh, so that will assign each team their technique. So first for uh, first team, a number. First team, which is all in excess, um, will have the number 16. So you guys get escalar exponencialmente. So please add it to your Zoom name and uh, keep it close to your heart. <laughs> uh, so second team. Um, second team, which is um, fundamentals, um, eight. You guys get desplazar exponencialmente also exponentially. Um, so I'm going to ch change the pattern because it's pretty obvious. <laughs> <laughs> um, third team, which is cyberpunkies, gets two. Two? That's <laughs> the, no, three. I can three, use it um, Yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah, sure. And then lastly, uh, Lastly, um, fourth team, Salvadores, will get um, 15. No, did I already say, I already said 16, sorry. <laughs> they will get, <laughs> they will get It's 10. random, Melissa. <laughs> and, uh, no, no, I changed my mind, sorry. <laughs> sure. They get desplazar parabolicamente. So, yeah, move parabolically. Um, so those are your techniques for the day. Uh, very random, as you could see. Uh, so let's move on to the Nerd Architect Manifesto while they have a few minutes to think, right? Yes, so maybe just before that, we can ask the Mariano, Andrew, and Peter if they have any questions about the dynamics, uh, about the scoring, Maybe you have infinite questions, but fundamental questions. Yeah. I have a question. I um, the comment that we're supposed to give them uh, the very precise comment is 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 that to be delivered in writing, or we are supposed to simply say it verbally? So we have the 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 grade plus a comment for each yeah. of the teams. Is that correct? So we yeah, just yeah. verbalize the comment, or we have to kind of yes. do it. Yeah, 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 verbalize. It. We'll be seeing the screens of each of, of, of the teams, like sequentially, rhythmically. They will be sharing one team, one minute, the other team, another minute, and so on. So the, the jury is able to see the, the process of, of each stage. And after that, 
uh, Melissa and Joanna will guide us. Uh, so when we have to say the, the score and just say one brief uh, sentence or, or, or something as a, as a way of feedback, uh, okay. having in mind that in a certain way you are influencing uh, what's going to happen after that. Okay. okay. Cool. And Peter, Andrew. Uh, can you hear me yes okay great um no no questions uh, yeah mine was just the same if you'd be able to look over their shoulders and watch the process to make sure they weren't cheating and using grasshopper without us knowing I think you 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 yes. gave us that. Who are the 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 users who are supposed to keep their score secret, like in per stage? We'll let you guys know, but you are actually the first one, so okay. Okay. we'll tell you for each round. So I I send it to you by message. Yeah. Okay. Um, private message. Yeah. <laughs> So um, we'll proceed to learn to read the um, Nerd Architect Manifest. Um, we're sorry, Peter, we only have it in Spanish. This, this particular okay. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so I'll begin. Uh, uno, el arquitecto nerd es estratégico. Su pensamiento estratégico distingue la forma del ruido para singularizarlo mediante recursos técnicos escasos, pero de eficacias gozosas. Sus técnicas articulan capacidad sensible e ímpetu organizador. Sus eficacias progresivamente cultivan destrezas de una intuición increíblemente compleja. Sus ingenios plantean problemas interesantes indiferentes a los falsos problemas. Sus inquietudes establecen nuevas formas de autoría, devoradora de clichés. Sus devenires festejan el devenir de los procesos consistentes y no lineales, con una música que dice qué mejor que esto. Sus rigores elevando las cualidades de la arquitectura hacia un medio puramente geométrico. El arquitecto nerd es elegante. Su modo de valorar, sobrio en sus procedimientos, pero subterráneamente embriagador, sintetiza, como un rayo, la heterogeneidad en una unidad que no la plana. Sus agudezas establecen voluntades estratégicas con valentía y prudencia. Su ductilidad gestiona con gracia una multiplicidad de procesos complejos. Su su perspicacia se expresa en intervenciones sucitas, sucintas que valoran el impacto de la sutileza y los intervalos silenciosos. Su incisión construye relaciones entre procesos rigurosos y las resonancias culturales del objeto arquitectónico. Su cerebralidad aumenta las capacidades de su sensibilidad, construyendo una multiplicidad de relación con el material. Su voluntad de proyecto ambiciona organizar el mundo, sistematizar contingencias, emerger tendencias y proyectar formas donde no la hay. 3. El arquitecto nerd es preciso. Su destreza técnica articula estrechamente herramientas con proyectos construyendo cualidad arquitectónica intrínseca. Su curiosidad progresivamente conceptualiza la tecnología como medio de pensamiento arquitectónico. Su sutileza hace surgir la cualidad de la cantidad misma de material. Su intempestividad opera desde dentro de la contemporaneidad. Su radicalidad despliega una práctica hardcore centrada en conceptos e imaginaciones técnicas. Su ingenuidad enfatiza sus manías y locuras, utilizándolas como medio para la organización de procesos proyectuales inéditos. Su impasibilidad distribuye cantidades anodinas en cualidades y superconciencia arquitectónica. 4. El arquitecto nerd es culto. Su fricción cultural y técnicamente interesante con los materiales construye agendas precisas que se realimentan en cada uno de sus proyectos, fabricando una textura perpetuamente novedosa. Su interés expande la cultura que lo precede, enriqueciendo el conocimiento que genera. Su tenacidad sigue la mutación de sus ideas hasta el fin. Su exigencia le impone a cada proyecto la oportunidad de superación. Su sensibilidad propicia arquitecturas apoyadas en planos disciplinares que despliegan múltiples relaciones culturales. Su fascinación expande incrementalmente con cada proyecto una inercia que se alimenta a sí misma. Su amor recrea en cada proyecto la pasión por las diferentes formas de hacer arquitectónico. 5. 
El arquitecto nerd es versátil. Su foco y capacidad de condensación abarca una multiplicidad de herramientas que moldean su forma de pensar a cada una. Su maleabilidad construye diferentes formas de proceso cada vez. Su confianza aborda las herramientas sin escepticismo y vigorosamente. Su salvajismo forja los argumentos de sus proyectos sin costuras. Su expansividad ramifica los materiales desde el centro mismo de su masa crítica. Su dedicación comprende la profundidad de los problemas productivos, inventando posibles vías de resolución. Su intrepidez experimenta en formas y procesos incómodos y desconocidos, haciendo de la inexperiencia su impulso. 6. El arquitecto nerd es multidimensional. Su, su sabiduría despliega múltiples modalidades de ser nerd, absorbiendo a sus interlocutores para crear personajes disímiles, heterogéneos, pero converge convergentes en un único plano de consistencia. El nerd dataísta construye una arquitectura robusta y verosímil, mediante la transformación de la data en criterios proyectuales, trascendiendo las normativas desde dentro por pleno conocimiento y manejo diestro de la información. El nerd obsesivo construye una arquitectura consistente a través de todas sus escalas, procesos, ideas y conceptos, mediante una incesante intensidad del pensamiento y una gran profundidad de la experimentación. El nerd matricialista construye una arquitectura de la arquitectura, una arquitectura, de la arquitectura por exceso de organización, estrategia y táctica, mediante una síntesis y conceptualización constantes, formando equilibrios inestables y suscitando el devenir de las ideas. El nerd filosófico construye una arquitectura conceptual, técnicamente mediada, gozosa de las resonancias teóricas que emana desde el interior del mismo de la organización material hasta sus proyectos, hacia el proyecto. El nerd tecnicista construye una arquitectura cuyo estilo no es más que la expresión de la abundancia de técnicas embriagadora, escarnando la materia y celebrando lo irreductible del devenir singular de sus procesos rigurosamente controlados. El nerd utópico construye una arquitectura provocativa que trasciende los límites de la moral y destruye clichés para instaurar formas de vida superiores y propias, creando valores desde la arquitectura que imagina. Y por último, el arquitecto nerd se acerca con curiosidad y asombro hacia la tipología de super skyscrapers y repentinamente siente el impulsivo deseo de desafiar sus propios límites. Se propone trascender su estado genérico mediante la diferenciación de sus arquitecturas elementales, tergiversando sus precondiciones de optimización en búsqueda de construir valor por cualidad. Se propone repensar su relación con el suelo mediante la ruptura del prisma idealizado, construyendo condiciones de relación con su exterior que va más allá del lote. Se propone cuestionar sus lógicas lineales que culminan en un remate ornamental mediante la integración del mismo al edificio impregnando todo su desarrollo en momentos de hipertrofías y excesos organizativos. Se propone encontrar una nueva estética superadora de la verticalidad simbólica mediante una única técnica apilada de obsesivamente hiper caracterizando la forma del edificio más allá de su direccionalidad prominente. Y esas son algunas de las muchas cosas que el arquitecto nerd es. Habiendo dicho eso, estamos equipos, están más o menos listos para arrancar. ¿Sí? Ok, como ya saben ellos y les cuento a todos, volviendo al inglés, they're going to be sharing uh, their screens and we'll be timing them in the background so that we can see each one around the same time. Uh, so, please, if all in excess can share, I'll begin timing the 10 minutes of work. So, ready, set, click.
there's one minute left, guys. Fifteen seconds left. Time's up. We're done for the first round. Okay, so um, we'll share screens again by team and each of the jurors will give their score. So can first all in excess share their screen um, without music this time. And, and well, their, te their technique is to scale exponentially. And the first, um, First, Andrew, uh, it's your comment, and remember this round your score is kept a secret, but you can give uh, some feedback. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't have much uh, critical comments, I guess. I, I, I just to say that uh, I, I very much like it, maybe, it's a little too overstylized, uh, but uh, we'll see what happens next. Great. So then, um, Mariano, you can give a score and feedback. Sorry, I was saying like uh, the score first or, or the comment first, or it doesn't matter. As you wish, you can keep it like in suspense or you can say it at sure. the beginning. Yeah, well, the score is uh, a three. And I think uh, the comment I would give is, um, I agree with uh, Andrew that is an, a stylized uh, model. I like the uh, kind of a differential expansion of the tower in different um, segments of its vertical body. So. I like it. Okay, so Peter, what's your score and feedback for this group? I'm going to keep the score in suspense until the end, also because I haven't formed it exactly completely in my head yet. I think my, my first comment would be that uh, the use of the gumball is quite not precise. I, I, I would criticize the use of the gumball. I think you probably had the time to calculate the distance for each slab and then to scale it in one direction based off of a fixed quantity. So uh, it's going to be below a three for that reason. Um, but it, I think that the decision to, at each technical floor to, to sort of rotate the axis of Transformation is interesting, like the bottom part is transformed in the uh, Y direction, the top and, and the X, or am I wrong? Oh no, they're all in the same direction. No, I can't exactly tell. No, they switch. Yeah, they do switch. Um, so can we, do, can we do decimal scoring system or does it have to be a whole number? Um, whole number, please, too. Uh, and that gets, yeah, I'll, I'll also do a, uh, Yeah, then I will also do a three. Just to say, if, if I could do a decimal, I would do a 2.5, but I can't, so I rounded up to a three. Okay, so 
Okay, so you rounded it, it down. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, last but not least, Manuel. Okay, uh, thank you, Melissa. Um, I like that, that, that you're using the, the different types of slabs. I appreciate that. Uh, I also appreciate the, the fact that um, although it's not completely uh, done that way, uh, there's a, a global uh, strategy at, at play. Uh, maybe in that sense, it, it could be or it could have been more interesting or it could be more interesting to, to use the, the different types of slabs as um, thresholds of the, of the modality. Uh, and now they are, uh, they're, they're, they're not quite thresholds. Yeah, and my score is a, a four. Um, okay, so next team, fundamentals, can you share screen please? And Andrew, you can uh, remember your, yeah, your score is secret. And you can start. No, um, this is fundamentals, right? Yeah. Um, no, maybe similar to the to the comment of the of the use of the gamble. I thought that using the um, the curve to regulate the the translation of the slab. Slaps was a good idea, given that you have maybe a more complex uh, uh, curve of movement. But uh, at the end, using the gamble was a little imprecise. Uh, maybe you could have, uh, I don't know, co counter the, the curves and use the uh, intersection points to snap it, to snap the movement. But um, but but still, I I I I think it's it's uh, interesting because um, um, at, at the bottom part it's a very regular uh, has a very very regular profile. At the middle it becomes a little too erratic, and then at the end, through uh, um, yeah, through I don't know excess or or proximity of the uh, curves, because they become smaller, it becomes a little more regular again. I think that's, that's nice. Okay, and um, I forgot to mention that this team's um, technique is to move exponentially. Yeah. And next one, uh, Mariano, your score and comments. Yeah, um, well, I'm warming up here, but I think um, I like the, the word erratic that Andrew was using. I'm sorry, Andrew, I keep building <laughs> on your comments, but- um, We need to I like, <laughs> uh, Yeah, I like the, the fact that that erratic um, sort of uh, quality distorts the, uh, the, the smooth regularity of the original, but at the same time, I think it's, it's too erratic. You know, it's like too um, random in the end, the outcome. So I'm not convinced that using the same curve to make those displacements was the best uh, decision. So my score is a uh, three. Perfect, Peter? Yeah, I have a lot of the, the same comments. The use of the curve being, uh, I would have liked to see like more precise quantitative uh, displacements or movements. You could have used the contour and then, uh, you know, contoured the curve to create points or you could have used the project command. There's ways of doing that fairly easily. Um, I also think it's interesting that they decided to transform the floor plates in the in the right direction as opposed to the front, right? Because in the front direction, it's a, it's a sort of continuous repetition of lines, but in the right view, it's a sort of setback. So they chose they chose the direction which already had variation in its dimension, right? They could have right they could have done it they could have done like a front wiggle or a side wiggle, and they did a side wiggle. But I'm same with Mariano. I'm I'm kind of unable to reverse engineer visually what the actual operation was because of how erratic it was. Like I I can't see the uh, I can't see the methodology. I can't sort of trace it with my eyes. So um, 
I, I give it a 2.5, again, rounding it up to a three. Ah, uh, two point five. Okay, so a lot of threes for now. Uh, Manuel? Yes, I, I, I agree with uh, certain critics um, in the sense that uh, I, I like that they are using an auxiliary curve or a, they are using like a, a meta technique for the technique. But uh, we, we saw it on, on the screen and now we see the effects of, of, of the way they use it, that they use, they use the one curve that they were copy pasting. So that finally is working more like a, a mold and, and not like a, not, not, not a, a, as a way of, of distributing uh, exponentially the, 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 the movements of the, of the slabs. So in, in that sense, uh, I, I, I disagree with the erraticity because I think it's, um, it's against the, the technique the exponential the exponentiality of the technique so i would give it a three great next team uh can share the screen is cyberpunkies who are working to divide the model linearly and andrew do you have any comments Um, I have questions. I, I, I uh, their, their technique was to divide linearly. Um, maybe because I, I didn't catch it when, when you were screen sharing, but I, I don't understand the subdivision part. Uh, I see that the, the linearly, but not, I, I see displacement, not, not division. Um, I don't know if they, they can answer, but uh, I I don't get it. I don't get it. Um, we didn't uh, plan for answers, so but I guess that's uh, the you you're going to have to reflect that on your score for this round. Uh, mm -hmm. Leave it in suspense for that. Okay. Who are next to Mariano? <laughs> Yeah, um, my reaction to this one is a little bit more visceral. I think uh, I I don't personally like the uh, the final effect, which is like a, it, it's it looks like a, you know like a tree branch or something like that. It's too too organic, you know, in, in relation to the original. And I'm not convinced that it, it's it's about subdivision or dividing, as Andrew said as well. So combining those two comments, I think my score would be a, a, a three. Great, uh, Peter. Yeah. Um, yeah, a bit the same. The same with Andrew. I don't understand how it's divided and the linearity of it. It seems that going from the ground up is sort of you have a vertical version and then a, a linear displacement another vertical version another linear displacement then it goes vertical again and at the very top it sort of falls, falls apart into a strange wiggle where you can't really tell what's linear and vertical uh which may which may be can you go to a more consistent view like the front view and then the side view uh -huh. and then the and then the front view is just going to be it's not right. Okay. Yeah. Can you go to a top view and then go to wider and then go to wireframe? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, kind of. Um, I think Mariana's comment about the transformation of the original that it, that it has this organic sort of final quality, whereas the original is. Um, much more like the repetition of a floor plate along a, a along a rigorous mathematical logic. Um, I, I have to give it a two, mainly because mainly because I can't see the, the division in it, nor can I see the linearity in it. Not to say that I don't think it's interesting, with uh, but just the 
the yeah the execution of the techniques I, I can't I, I can't see it so for that it's a two okay and last Manuel okay yeah uh, I agree with the comments um, I don't see the, the use of division as a, as a technique not not uh, in any scale I mean there is not not even I don't know meta division or division as a strategy or, or something of that sort. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I I don't lose the optimism uh, in the sense that in the next stage uh, you can use this as a given and, and use the, the technique of, of division as part as as part of uh, of what you do with, with the words. My score is at two. Yeah. Just one more comment that uh, I don't think any of the jurors should should hold the first step against any of the other steps, right? We have to kind of judge each one independently. Just because Mariano can't viscerally act to his dislike of the tree branch in the next step, he has to react only to the precise, right? Because we don't want the, uh, yeah. the, the the single misstep at the beginning to contaminate the rest of the, the processes. And also, it, in their defense, it would have been very difficult to to create a visual to visually divide. I mean, I think what they could have done potentially is split the floor plates into a number of pieces without moving them, right? So that the, in the next step, the person who inherited it could transform the subdivided floor plates. Yeah. So maybe that's just uh, a spicy tidbit for, for, for the next round is maybe you're just preparing the person who inherits it after you for the transformation as opposed to doing the transformation yourself. Maybe. Yeah, I, I had a, a question about the, the rules of the game. So the, the techniques they, they receive, they're only allowed to use that technique. No, or can they, they complement it with another? Um, no, they are only allowed to use their technique, and they can use like, um, like uh, uh, I don't uh, commandos up uh, like um, the second order that could be like copy, but not to duplicate material, the matter on the, of the model, but to um, shortcut something that they have uh, already done by deleting something, for example. But they should only use. Uh, the commands they were given. Okay, so I'm, I'm, they're allowed to, to do copy, paste, delete, plus a technique, let's say. Or, some, or, or I don't know, okay. It's oh, more okay. the spirit of the, of the project, let's say. We're not going to be judging that closely, but the idea is that it's overwhelmingly their technique and also that's what's driving the project, let's say, even if they're using smaller commands to shape it, let's say. Mm -hmm. Maybe, if, I don't know, Shana, Melissa, one general comment. I, I, I think in, the, in, in different degrees, but in the four uh, groups, we've seen a little bit of formal anxiety uh, or anxiety of uh, formal effects. Uh, and, and maybe the next uh, stages or next steps are uh, an opportunity to calm down a little bit and, uh, yeah, and, and trust trust in the uh, in the next stage that it's, it's not necessary you do not necessarily have to everything in one stage thank you <coughs> Okay, yeah, that's uh, a handful of advice. I mean, I think Peter is sympathizing with this team. He likes it, and or and he he would he would like to like it. Um, and yes, we've seen like really crazy things happen over the years. Uh, the scores turn around any time, and it's um, yeah, it's it's really um, uh, an enigma. 
until the end who wins. Uh, so uh, this wasn't the last group. We have one more to go, which is Salvadores. Can you share their, your screen, please? And they are attempting to move uh, parabolically. So Andrew, any comments? Mm -hmm. Uh, could you show a, a front view or right view? Uh, um, the, the other view isn't uh, uh, translated. The, the slopes are the same. Okay. No, I, I, I mean, I, I think it's a, uh, the, the operations you've, you've done are, are pretty uh, repetitive and simple. Given the Manuel's comment on formal anxiety, I don't know if that's a critique or, or a compliment, but um, I, I, so I, I mean, I, there, there's not much space to, to critique that. Uh, because it's very simple, but um, um, no, I, I don't have uh, critics. It's okay. Your score can value simplicity, in a way. Mm -hmm. So, Mariano, next. Yeah, well, I I, uh, I do value simplicity in this particular case. I like the zigzagging uh, effect. Uh, I like the regularity of it. I like the, uh, the, the the pattern of repetition, which is something that the previous cases tended to lack in the sense that they try to create differentiation uh, one step at a time. And I think here the simple operation of um, displacing uh, and creating this zigzagging in a, in a manner that is um, compatible with the regularity of the original, it's a, it's a value or it's a, it's a quality uh, for me. So uh, in that sense, I'll give it um, a four. Great, Peter? Can, um, can we see somehow where the technical floors are? Because they used to be a, a different, can you change the layer color of it? If you go to the layer panel and change the color of the technical floors. Yeah. Okay. Somehow I was hoping that the zigzagging corresponded to the technical floors, but it seems that you've, um, uh, it seems that you've disregarded the technical floors as, as a potential mode of differentiation, um, which is uh, maybe a bit of a lost opportunity. Maybe the zigzagging could have been conditioned somehow by the technical floors. Um, but yeah, I, I agree with Mariana's comments that the regularity of the operation actually probably produces one of the more complex visual, um, visual effects, especially at the top. Right where the the, the floor the floor slab itself is is already differentiated, therefore like a simple transformation kind of exponentially visually creates an effect. So um, congratulations on that. I think the top, I think particularly the top of this model is the most interesting part of any tower we've seen so far. So for that, I give it a four. Great, and when this round of scores, Manuel. Uh, yeah. I like the, the simplicity of the technique. I hope for a complex uh, strategy and a complex idea behind. I, I give it a five. Did you say a five? Yes. Okay. Wow. Right. Okay, sorry, what, what, what's a parabola? It says parabolic translations. 
Are they parabolic? Uh, Should I answer? <laughs> like, I don't know if it's my place. <laughs> I think maybe we can keep going and you can ask yeah. again later, maybe. Yeah, okay. in that case, the, the question is a critique, right? Because the, the a parabolic function uh, tends to infinity in its both its ends, right? So maybe you can use that as an agenda for the next stages. It, so it was parabolic displacement. What was, was the English translation of it? Was it movement or what? Yeah, uh, displacement and the Rhino command is moved. Okay. So we are uh, done with this round. Let's uh, get started with the next one. Are the teams ready for, have they um, sent each other the model? Okay, so let's start. Um, Fundamentals is going to start sharing the screen and when I uh, drop the count, you can. Okay. okay, so ready, set, click. If you guys want any music, now's the time. Mariano, ¿cómo estás? Me quedé un ratito más, nada más, recién, recién acabo de cortar y escuché tu audio. Eh...
Okay, time's up. Mouse is down. Yes. Okay, round two done. Uh, so this time around, uh, we'll start with Mariano, Mariano, <laughs> who has the secret mode as well, so that we can rotate and it's not all up to Andrew to break the ice. Um, so all in excess, if you can share again. Yeah, I, I was counting on Andrew's comments uh, <laughs> to build upon them. Uh, so <clears throat> you, you could guess, you could, you could guess what Andrew is going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'll play. I'll play uh, Andrew's role. Um, well, I think uh, I think the um, so so the operation. I think it's consistent with the previous one in the sense that uh, it's echoing the uh, distortions of the um, of the floors um, can you uh, can you zoom out a little bit just just to see the the whole the whole volume um, yeah I again I, I am being very um, straightforward and honest with my own uh, reactions uh, in terms of I like it or I don't like it. And I, I think it's, um, it's very elegant. Uh, I like it. Uh, I like the sort of the, the rhythm that those um, expanding uh, surfaces uh, generate. So I'll give it um, a four. No. <laughs> Secret boat. No, but it's good. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. Okay. No, I'm just no, joking. So we can improvise on this round. Yeah. Uh, I can change it. I can change it if I'm not. No, it's, no, fine. it's fine. It's fine. It's the so enthusiasm. Going. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You keep going. Uh, your your score is not secret anymore. Um, <laughs> we'll change it this round. <laughs> okay. Round. Yeah, we can sorry. we can do Peters this round. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to, dis to disturb the <laughs> no, order. It's sorry. Such a rebel. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, Peter, any comments and no scores? <laughs> yes. Um, can you go to a, a front view wireframe? Uh huh. And can you zoom in really close to just one of the slabs? Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then can you go to a right view? Yeah. If I were, if I were, well, yeah, I'm not giving scores, but I can tell you that if I were only scoring the front view, then I would score it much higher than if I also had to score the right view, right? Because um, the consistency in the front view is is quite rigorous, but then um, in the right view, it sort of falls it falls apart in terms of the relationship between the um, between the geometry. And you can tell that you use the gumball again, right? Because each each of the pieces of geometry has it's sort of deformed, it's sort of morphed, right? As opposed to, let's say, um, which requires the internal calculus of Rhino, as opposed to you could have done a more Euclidean operation for exponential scaling and worked floor by floor and transformed it on a floor by floor basis, in which case you wouldn't have gotten this global transformation section by section. So um, yeah, I'm keeping my score secret, but those are my comments. Okay, so now Manuel. Yeah, Manuel. Um, I, I agree with uh, Peter about the, the the front view versus the right view. And at first, I thought you were you were 
go in direct, direction of, of building some uh, like Nehemiah uh, columns, and I thought that was interesting, but in the moment that they became an envelope, uh, I don't know, for me it's, it's becoming a, a preconceived image, I think. So I will read uh, one. Oof. <laughs> Okay, Andrew. Okay, yeah. It's <laughs> uh, Simon Cowell of the, of the Euro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can, can you put a, a, a plan view from the top and in wide frame? I have never imagined you watched. What show is it? American, American Idol. Idol. <laughs> American Idol. Idol. <laughs> what? <laughs> Such dated reference. Um, No, I, 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 I think I, I um, agree with some of the comments about the uh, the apparent elegance and uh, yes, the apparent elegance. Um, um, I, I think that maybe the the, the challenge for this uh, team is that um, that elegance. Uh, has some transformational potential. Uh, maybe that, that, that is a point where a comment of Manuel uh, could be uh, uh, answered, which is about uh, preconceived, or uh, I don't, maybe he said prefiguration, I think. Uh, um, 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 I, I think that it's still in a point where uh, it, it's not uh, producing, I don't know, structural transformations in, in terms of organization, maybe also in terms of physical structure, but uh, <coughs> uh, I think it's not there yet. Um, I mean, the, the, the scaling of, of things uh, it's not, uh, even though it's done in a, uh, in a direction that I, if I understood correctly, it's not that done uh, only in the longitudinal direction of the slab, it's still not introducing a, a change in the direction of the structure, uh, for as an example, no? Uh, it's only done to a point where it's still just elegant, but not, uh, so transformative. Uh, I I would give it a um, a three. Great, thank you. So let's move on to the next team. Fundamentals. Can you share again? So, so, so th this was uh, all in excess, right? Yeah. Yes, we are always going to see the groups in the same order uh, for the scores. Okay. Take off for help. So, Mariano, do you want to um, start? I'm supposed to give the score, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> keep giving the score. Yeah, okay. but not next. Or we time. can do two <laughs> hidden ones. You never know. No, 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 no. That, that's fine. I can give it. Um... And what was the operation here? Like uh, move exponentially. Move exponentially. Yeah. Um, can you show me the, the, the front view? And the right view again. Uh, but but zoom out so I can see the whole, the whole thing. Yeah. Um, and the axle. Okay. 
Can you zoom in, please? Sorry, sorry to to be so insistent. Yeah, so, um, I mean, I guess also that in this case, there is um, a certain inertia of the previous, uh, of the manipulation of the previous element. Uh, and I guess that in this case, they're trying to kind of follow along uh, the same lines, but I was, if you, if you zoom into the um, lower part of the tower, um, can you, can you zoom, like right there in that axle, can you zoom in? So some of the, um, the floors, I don't know if the, that distance is consistent, uh, but, but there is like a little bit of, a, of, of the floor that exceeds uh, the plane of the, um, the wall and then in the in the in the other segments that doesn't seem to be repeated that seems to be an inconsistency um can you turn on the floors please please yeah um Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what happened there. But anyways, so I think I'm not. I'm not fully convinced um, by the. Uh, let's say the by by looking at it in detail. Like the nuance of it uh, seems to be. Um, it seems to lack some nuance. That's what I mean. Like it's a bit rough. So I'll give it. A, I can. I can give the score right. So I'll give it a, a two. Okay. Thank you. And we're giving some leeway to the first one, but let's keep it going. So Peter, if you want to yeah. give your comment. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty straightforward approach, right? They're just kind of uh, doing their best, it seems, to duplicate the first uh, transformation. But again, like our Mariana was mentioning, uh, it seems there's some sort of inconsistency. I was I was also, you know, what I what I did initially like about it is that it creates that it could potentially, depending on how you deal, you know, would deal with the curtain wall and vis-a-vis -vis the curtain wall the distribution of emollients, um, it could produce balconies, which the original didn't have. And if the um, if the point of this building is to let's say maximize the profit for the developer investment, then they could um, charge more for the units based off of um, having the amenity of terraces. So if you accept the logic of, let's say, the accumulation of capital as the productive principle for the skyscraper, then you've um, increased uh, you've increased the profit margins and therefore its operativity financially, which, you know, I think I would challenge the entire premise of the skyscraper. But um, if you accept that premise, then I think it's quite successful um, I'll give it a four. Okay, thanks. And Manuel? Yes. Um, well, I, I, I don't agree particularly with the uh, politics uh, of, the, of this group, maybe others, but specifically this group regarding the how they relate with the previous uh, stage. Uh, that is what they are uh, inheriting, let's say. And, uh, and I think they, they didn't deploy uh, the, the, the technique in itself in relationship with the, with the, with the stage, but instead they, they just uh, accommodated the, the walls so that they fit uh, perfectly with the, uh, the changes that they, they have done in the slabs. So uh, I think in between that and, and working autonom autonomously or uh, segregatedly in the, in the stage, there is a in-between zone that would be interesting to explore in, in the following stages. So for me, it's a uh, Great. 
Thank you. And Andrew, and maybe you can keep your score to yourself and send the, the text. I keep it to myself, okay? Just for this one, because we have no other either <laughs> one. <laughs> okay. Uh, could you uh, put a, um, a frontal view, please? Oh, yes, I was supposed to keep mine secret. Oh, it's very hard. <laughs> no, it's okay. I didn't remind you, so we're, we're doing it more randomly. Sorry, it's my yeah. fault, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and, and now a, a right view. Yeah, could, could you zoom in and pan, pan from the bottom up? Okay. Could, could you go down again one more time? Sorry if we're taking too long. Uh, no, um, I, I mean, uh, I, I, I agree with, with uh, most of the, the comments that it, it is, it is, uh, it, it is not problematic. It, it, does, it doesn't problematize its relation, relation with the slabs. Uh, it's the, sort of the opposite. Uh, um, with the exception of the of the th those terraces that we see on the on the big uh, setbacks of those group of slabs that have uh, these um, how say say supports or vertical supports or tabiques. Uh, containing them, but uh, it, um, I, I don't know, I, I was seeing what, one of the criteria for the evaluation and there's, there's a, I mean, the, the resources are, are very uh, um, tightly used, but the effects are also very uh, Tight or less, I, I don't know. It's it, it, it's. Um, I, I would give you that too. Oh. <laughs> it is very hard. I I know. Ah, I know. Yes. It's fine I'm sorry. because we, we don't know. We don't know for some of the other ones. <laughs> so let's okay, keep so going. That, so the next next one we need to keep to yeah. To, can I just, and uh, I tell us now, tell us now and, and remind us, please. Yeah. We, we all know that Andrew was lying, so. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> okay, so let's see Cyberpunk's model. And Marianne, you, you start. You can give your score or not, whatever you're feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sorry, I, I feel uh, very guilty. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, and I'm just reminding everybody that this is divide linearly. Uh, <laughs> okay, divide linearly. Um, uh, so, can you uh, show me the uh, the right side? Uh, well, yeah, or, or just turn around. Yeah, let me just. Um, Well, my, my impression is um, a priori the, the same um, as in the previous case. It seems to me that the operation with this element is following um, the inertia of the previous operation. Uh, in, I mean, that's of course a possibility and that um, it makes sense, but it could also be that somebody decides to go in a different direction and, and, and use the element, in this case, the, uh, the walls or the partitions. Um, to produce a contradictory effect or, or, or an opposite effect or something like that. So in that sense, I, I just, my, my, my reaction, my impression, my reading is very similar in terms of the effect of this model on me um, than the one that I expressed about the previous model. So um, I guess the, um, the grading would be the same, right? Should, should, I, should I mention it? Yeah, so it would be a two. Great. Thanks. And 
now that we're warming up, maybe we can make shorter, more uh, pointed comments if you guys feel like it. Yeah, I'll keep. I'll try to keep mine secret again to be consistent. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it, very it, like Mario said, very similar to the last group. Um, just a minor comment. It might help to turn off the ISO curves in almost all of the cases because the mm -hmm. ISO curves, some of them have pluses and some of them have horizontal lines, which it creates a sort of artificial complexity to the geometry. Um, but having said that, can you turn on the interior walls? The pink, uh, or are the interior walls on? Or, I guess they're on there's because in the last group they were pink and I guess this time everything's purple. Okay. Well, um, yeah, I, I, it's the same. I like that they create terraces facing the park. I mean, uh, everybody was very hard. I just want to make an observation. Everybody was very hard on, um, the last group because the transformation wasn't inventive enough. Uh, but w what the transformation actually did for the building, and if we know that the Central Park is right there, the simple move of creating that balcony completely transforms the opportunity of the building, which for me is the power of it. It's like, you know, the, the minimum number of clicks for the maximum amount of outcome in terms of what the building does. So if, um, I like this transformation for the same reason. And also the jury was very hard on uh, the first round being critical of an over exuberance of form or let's say a formal anxiety. And then so the, the obvious reaction from the teams is to be more restrained and then they make a more restrained move and then uh, we just lowball them on our scores. So, which I think is uh, interesting. Um, so for that, I'm not going to give a score. I will share, uh, I'll, I'll keep it secret. Such an amazing moment. Thank you. Uh, my, my comment is, <laughs> Uh, the same, the same comment that I made for the last group about what Andrew put in better words, maybe not not problematizing the relationship between uh, columns and slabs. So it's for me, it's a two. Thank you, and Andrew. No, I I, I want to I, I need I think. For this case in particular, it's important to to know concretely where's the subdivision. I mean, because if not, we're going to keep uh, uh, having that that doubt uh, in the next part. So, I mean, I, I see the same amount of slabs of sorry for of tabiques than in the original. They are uh, more or less apart. But that is scale, not division. So I, I, I want to, uh, because if, I think that, that there's something I'm not getting. And uh, because I see that they keep uh, doing what they're doing, uh, I, I think it, it would be good to understand where's the subdivision in this. That's the comment, I would say. <laughs> so what's your score do i say it or do i keep it secret I yeah know. say it because if we have more than one per group it's like off <laughs> and I, I mean just to clarify um I, i'm saying that they, they are scaling them and not sub subdividing them because subdivision implies an increasing amount of stuff while scale uh, remains the same amount and just of different size. So that, that's why I don't see subdivision here. Um, anyway, so, okay, I, I say my score, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I'll, I'll give it a two. Great, thank you. And um, now for the last team, Los Salvadores want to share. <coughs> okay. Oh, Mariano. 
yeah um can you can you move around the, the volume can you can you zoom a little bit just to see a detail uh, I, I guess it's a repeated procedure so Um, well, I, I guess even like, like being consequent with my previous comment about this one and, and recognizing, recognizing the same inertia in the, uh, in the operation with this element, I like it uh, just because it's consistent with the movement that I already liked uh, in the first place. But also <laughs> I like the fact that it's creating, just following Peter's um, um, valorization of, uh, of, of balcony space. It's kind of articulating like balconies in every floor. It seems so, um, which is which is a quality of the original, which is something that the original didn't have. So that that's uh, something that is introducing further differentiation. So because of that reason, uh, I like it, and I like the consistency with the previous move. So sh shall I say my my sure? Score? I will keep uh, Peter's a secret. Okay, uh, <laughs> a four. Thank you, Peter. Yeah, I have a question for you who, who built this Rhino model. Um, yeah. Is the original Rhino model, were there, um, was there actual tenants on like the first, second, third, fourth floor? That did is you actually a see a second? Are there, are there tenants on the bottom floors? Like, are they occupied? Are there actually- Well, actually there? there's, um the the bottom part is uh our version of the model but the actual building has it's actually sitting on top sl slightly next to an older building already built uh mm -hmm. so the first few floors are larger have a different um subdivision logic and um the model is uh kind of shifting from that that's why it's so um, uniform. Uh -huh. Yeah, I yeah, that's, that's why I asked the the uniformity of it. Um, the 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 studio partner of mine who who I, I took Ciro's studio with was actually the project architect for this building, and I spoke to him about the bottom of it, and he at least it was during like SD or DD before it was built, but at a certain point. They were considering not even putting floor plates in the bottom third of the building because the cost of constructing the floor plates um, didn't translate to a profit for the developer because they didn't have a view of the park. So the entire like bottom of the building was completely empty as shell, and so you got a view of the park, and then they invested in floor plates. So that was just that was just yeah. Um, you know, we talked about, about it a little bit with the teams, but. Uh, decided yeah. that this was the model to use and then if if they wanted to change the way the building got to the floor then that was uh -huh. their it was in their power to do so mm -hmm. yeah but i mean it makes sense the repetition of the dimension makes the makes the competition um gives it makes it more juicy so i i guess it's, it's curious that um it's curious like I'm, I would be curious to have a debate with Mariano about how he gave this one a higher score than the last one, even though it was basically the same operation, in the <laughs> sense that they were just moving the, they were moving, you know, they. Uh, I would say that Mariano's higher score was his, his prejudice of liking it from the first step, contaminating his evaluation of the second step, right? But <laughs> I, I have to give it. Ooh, I would, I'm going to give all three of them the same score because they're all three the same operation, and the reason all three of them are the same operation is because of the jury's criticism of the formal exuberance of the first step right so and, and, and so yeah I'll, I'll stop there because i'm i won't give my score <laughs> but i'll just say it's all same. it's the same for all of the all the yeah. last three thank you for your restraint yeah um, manuel um yeah i i i like the the 
the fact that they are being consistent with the maybe uh, discrete uh, minimalism. Um, I think it, it could be interesting uh, to find uh, points, uh, not points, but states or moments where uh, it reaches a, a limit and not just uh, stay in that uh, comfortable reverberating zone where um, yeah, the, the, the movement of, of the of the columns follow uh, the previous, mostly follow the, the, the previous movements of the of the slabs. I will give it a three. Great, thanks. And last but not least, Andrew. Should I give my my my? Yeah. I, I give a, the number. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, could you put a, a frontal view? Is it frontal or right? Yes. Can you zoom into a portion of the... No, I, maybe to, to, to exemplify what I was saying the, the, another comment about the problematization. Um, I mean, here the, the, I don't know how to call it, but the, uh, not so apparent uh, parabolic movement of the slabs uh, make that the um, tabiques, uh, the walls, don't uh, uh, sit one on top of the other, at the not even a little bit. Uh, so that the movement is too uh, drastic for the walls to to support one, uh, to produce a continuous, you know, uh, um, uh, and load of the, of the, I don't know, loads. Um, so, I mean, I, I would have uh, taken the opportunity to, to, to see that problem and, and do something with it. Uh, so, for example, uh, continue scaling the, uh, scaling or, or moving, no, moving, your, your technique, technique is movement. Continue moving uh, the, the walls to a point where they, they have at least a minimum am amount of uh, superposition in, in plan. Uh, and by that, uh, uh, decreasing the amount of interior space and more exterior space, for example. Uh, um, I, I don't know, but that's an example of problematization, I guess, um, uh, to, to identify a problem and make it productive, let's say. Uh, uh, so for, for that reason, I, I, I give it a two. Thank you, everybody. And uh, now two things. First, I'll read the uh, current scores without the our many secret uh yeah, scoring from the judges. <laughs> and also letting you know that for the next and um, third, I mean, the next, which is the third round, we'll just do scores. And then for the fourth one, we'll do comments and scores and everything since it's going to be done. Uh, so right now, All in Excess is at 18 points. Fundamentals are at 15 points. Cyberpunkies are at 13 points. And Los Salvadores are at 22 points. But I'm looking at both those scores and the full scores. So you never know. Um, so are the teams ready for the next round? Which is Mullions. Uh, are you guys good to go? Taking the silence as a yes. Uh, so we're starting with uh, Cyberpunkies sharing their screen, and I'll let you know when we switch. So go click.
about humanity.
There's one minute left. Thank you for a great third round. Okay, so now uh, the scores. We were thinking that what if this time we made them, um, uh, we kept it only scores in order to um, leave the groups on their own for the last round. I mean, the, the comments, the feedback has been uh, really um, generous. Thank you to the jury. Uh, but now since it's the last round and everything is going, um, I mean, the thing uh, it's going to, so I it. I'm sorry for the mix of languages. Um, well, uh, we'll only make it just uh, the score. And uh, I don't know, maybe um, you can give it a tone to convey a message, right? So like one or, or something <laughs> to make it more interesting. Um, and uh, okay, this round, uh, Mariano, you are going to have the secret vote, uh, the secret score. So um, I don't know, you can just make a, a gesture or a noise or something instead of a comment. Is it okay? <laughs> okay, sure, yeah. <laughs> In order to let us know if you like it or dislike it or what do you feel? Uh, okay, so please uh, all in excess, share your screens and um, let's start with your, uh, only with your reaction, Mariano. I'm, I'm first. Yeah, the secret mm. one goes first from now on. Um, um, and um, to the groups, please leave just um, the uh, the whole um, model on site on the on the screen. Yeah, and keep it um, still. Thank you. Okay. Well, I. I don't know what gesture to make, like maybe that meme that looks like that way and that way, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm not giving my score. Should I send, send it to you? Um, okay. Yes, sure. Write it, us, write it down for us privately. Sure. Okay, so uh, now, uh, Peter, your, your score and reaction? <laughs> A three. Okay, great. Uh, Manuel? Three. And Andrew? 
Manuel, that was a really enthusiastic three. <laughs> was almost a four. Yeah. <laughs> a two. Okay. Um, great. Uh, next team, fundamentals. Please share your screen. And Mariano, give us only your reaction. Can you zoom in, please? Great. Okay, silence is the reaction. That's good. Um, Peter. Three. Could you move oh. around while Manuel says his his score? Andrew, I was saying the I was you lost my reaction. Sorry, Come sorry. On, re respect the rules. <laughs> <laughs> I, I say it again. Yes, yes, I didn't hear it. Okay. Andrew, I'm I'm about to say it. Please uh, don't interrupt. <laughs> Four. <laughs> The first one, the first one was better, but okay. Great. Now, Andrew, you have to to top that. You have to make a great, better expression. Can you move around a little bit? Or, or, or better yet, can, can you turn off all the layers and keep only um, the malians on? And zoom in a little bit. Yeah. Oh, you're too high maintenance. Sorry, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it a three. Great. So that's uh, fundamentals. Cyberpunk is. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to say the technique, but it's to this group is to divide linearly. And Mariano, your reaction. Um. Oh, sorry, please. Um, can you can you zoom in, please? Uh -huh. Huh. Ha, that's my reaction. <laughs> Perfect, Peter. Mm. Can you isolate the mullions there or make them in different color at least? Mm. One of the two. Uh, and this is, this was, uh, okay. Three. Manuel, your turn. Two. Oh, you're, you, did you already say it or were you thinking? He gave a very unenthusiastic two, so it's Andrew's turn. Oh, okay, sorry, I lost it because of the lack of enthusiasm, maybe. Uh, <laughs> and uh, two as well. Okay, so last 
group. Salvadores, can you share your screen, please? Mariano, any reactions? Yeah, can, can you zoom out a little bit so I can see the whole thing? And rotate just one time. Hmm. Okay. I'm done with my reaction. Okay. Uh, Peter. Can you go to the right view again? The, the other right view? Yeah. And then and then um, isolate the mullions. Yeah. yeah. But it's quite hard to tell what's going on. Right? I mean, to the top, yeah. to the top view one more time. To the top yeah, maybe view one more time. We have never seen a top view. I think. Yeah. Ah, four, four. C can you keep the top view and, and turn on the slabs? Meanwhile, Manuel, are you, are you ready with your score? Four, four, yeah. <laughs> okay. Great, four. Andrew? Could you go back, back into the perspective and, and zoom in? Yeah, zoom, zoom. Uh, a three. Great, so the, the scores so far without the, um, can you stop sharing? Yeah, thank you. The scores so far without um, the, the, including the secret ones are um, for the first group, all in excess is 26. Um, second group, uh, fundamentals, 25, really close. Um, Third group, Cyberpunkies, it's 20. And fourth group, Salvadores, is 33. But I mean, I mean, let me tell you that uh, the secret scores uh, change everything, you know, uh, only to give it like a bit mysterious. Yeah. It's not a linear thing here. Okay, so now let's move on to the fourth and final round which you're going to be differ differentiating, that's a hard word, um, the circulations, which are composed of elevators and stairs. Um, and uh, Salvadores, you're going to start sharing your screen and music, please. So we have 10 minutes. Yeah. I'm sorry, we have a little bit problem with sharing, so. No, we got we couldn't send uh, pass it through. Ah. The the file is not sending. <laughs> so you are gonna switch switch computers if you're all here. That's it. That's it. We got it. Okay. <laughs> you. Okay. Ready. Set. Click. Or not? Yes. Yeah. 
either put on music or sing yourselves. That's royalty free, I assume. <laughs> yes, if you can sing very well, you can. No curse words would be better. <laughs> Or you can just tell us what you're doing. I don't know. I was looking forward to you guys singing. I gotta say. No, no.
Okay, time's up. Stop the clicking. Awesome. So we're done with all four rounds. Uh, so we're going to do a final pass for the uh, juries, uh, jury guests. Uh, so we'll start with Manuel. Uh, keep your score secret, but I mean, all of you guys take into account that this is the final product of today. Uh, so if, uh, if all in excess can share again, and we'll see what you ended up with. I have to make a comment, right? Yep. Um, I do in, enjoy the, the tendency against the, uh, how do you say, elegancy or uh, the fact that it was too elegant and Andrew didn't like it. And me either. Um, but at some, at some point, I find it a little bit 
to sculpture, let's say. That's my comment. To what? Sculptural. Sculptural. Ah. Okay. Sculptural. Thank you. So, Andrew, since you're already asking as well, any follow up? <laughs> Do I give my point? Yep. Okay. Uh, right. Uh, I, I'm because it's the last round, and, and not only this, just the fourth part, but this is a, also a, a a moment to evaluate the entire thing, right? Uh, yeah. So in 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 that sense, I I, I would give it a four. Um, Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So uh, maybe we can um, just say maybe the scores this time and also a brief comment. But while we um, calculate calculate one, uh, so the final scores and um, and that that will take a couple of minutes. You can maybe uh, give like uh, feedback to the projects right mm -hmm. so or a more general comment yeah. for the day so mariano so the the comment is supposed to um refer to the last operation or to the to the whole thing you'll have a few minutes if you want to do those separately and then do the whole thing um, okay. 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 Uh, so I'm going to talk about the last operation. C can you? C I can't really see the um, the escalators or the uh, or sorry the the elevators. Okay. Um, hmm. Well, I I I guess there is an element of impossibility in those. Um, vertical circulations, like the fact that they are stepped, like, or like they are displaced from, you know, in relation from one, let's say from one floor to the other, um, seems in, unconvincing to me. And I, I would maybe have expected uh, the, the vertical circulation to be a, a, a bigger gesture, or maybe an element that could further be further differentiated from the previous set of operations. So my uh, score is uh, two. Great, thank you. And last one, Peter. Oh, sorry, I was muted. Um, can you go to the pure right view with only the circulation on? Yeah. And then can you change, can you change the coloration of the stairs and the escalators? Just change something to red or so I can differentiate. No, just one of them, just one of them. I want to be able to tell the difference between the two. Yeah. And then can you go to the front view? Uh, bizarre. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. And then if you turn them all back on, I think th th this particular operation, um, I would, I would have to give a, a two, because I think that you either, you have to either provide a sort of continuity because it is circulation, um, or take a sort of radical, uh, a radical approach and create a, a schism between them. But the schism could be done in a more, um, qualitative way where you're creating a schism at the mechanical floors and then transforming it in another schism. So either like a sort of complete radical separation of or a continuity, but it's sort of in between. Um, so yeah, for that reason, I give this the stage a two, but the overall 
I think it's interesting the the overall sequence that we started with slabs and then to uh, walls and then mullions and then circulation. Um, one, I think throughout the entire st the entire studio that there was a sort of diminishing returns through each stage. Like the first stage is for sure the most important because it in a way conditioned the other three. And it's almost impossible for the jury to sort of separate our prejudices from the previous rounds on on, on the operative round, let's say, um, which is maybe even a critique of our our jury. But I think, yeah, I mean, overall, I have a list here. I, I think you guys probably ended up around a 3.5 overall for me, um, which is sort of like average, a bit above average. Um, yeah, I would have liked to. Well, it would be interesting to hear the comments from from the team um, because I can't necessarily see a critical relationship between the stages. They don't necessarily build, or there's not a dialogue happening between them. Um, the, I think in future Olympics, a slow build that has a very critical relationship to previous stages, so that it sort of builds in an exponential way and starts to proliferate but kind of slowly and with control would be the best outcome. Um, yeah. No more comments, but I would get a two for the, a two for the circulation stage. Thank you. And um, if you guys want to do any final comments, you can keep it short, but. Us? Yeah. Very short, though. No, in, in a way, I, in a way, I, in a way, I agree. But I think that uh, um, we can we can possibly see see our our. Um, our way of working uh, that it's consistent throughout all, all of the systems. I think that that's that's interesting as well, and it, it sort of produces uh, difference as it as it grows and as it accumulates all of the all of the operations. Thank you, and thanks for using your voice for a couple of minutes. <laughs> um, thank, thank you. Uh, so. Uh, we'll move on and then come back to the conversation at the end. So fundamentals. Manuel, anything to say? Uh, could you isolate the, the circulation layer, please? Mm. Okay, and, and now the, the whole thing. Yeah, uh, I think the the initial the initial uh, movement movement of the slabs was either um, adopted uh, critically in the stages or dismissed at all, and I think I, I can see at least two or three projects uh, at the same time. In the, in the same project and without many communication uh, between those projects. So my, but that's a final remark, but for the, for the simulation, I, I would give it a, a two. Thank you. Andrew? 
Um, <coughs> if I get it correctly, uh, the circulations in, in, increment their size. Uh, well, the slabs decrease theirs, uh, and uh, what and um, and at the same time, the Amalians produce. Uh, is it the Amalians or the or the walls? I'm not sure. Can, can you turn on the Amalians? Yeah, the Amalians. At the same time, the Amalians pr produce some sort of. Uh, Envelope that contains big uh, uh, semi-exterior spaces uh, mm -hmm. in which that uh, circulations, those uh, scaled circulations occupy. Uh, I, I, I think that that could be an interesting idea to, to make uh, circulations uh, a way to inhabit those spaces. Uh, I mean, like, like the ones we're seeing here, no, this one. I don't know if I can draw, but uh, like those ones, uh, to, to make circulations, uh, some sort of uh, common space that increases uh, as you go up, while private space diminishes. I think that's an interesting idea, and it only makes sense uh, at this stage. Uh, before I, I, I didn't, I, I before this stage, I, I would have agreed with Manuel. Uh, but but now I, I, I can see a project. Uh, I, I would give them a uh, four. Perfect. Thank you. Mariano? Yeah, so uh, I'll restrain my, my comments to the uh, circulation operation. Uh, for me, it's um, in a very different way from the previous case, but also, um, also in a very similar way. Um, in other respects, I think it's too whimsical to me. Like I, I find the, the operation with the uh, circulation in this case, like a little bit detached from um, from the other operations, uh, but also in a way that, that I, mean, I mean, I don't know, it looks a little bit whimsical or clumsy. So I'll give it the same score too. Thanks. Peter? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I agree with um, Mariano that it, it it seems a bit whimsy or uh, clumsy or whimsical, um, but I wouldn't be as harsh with it because it's a sort of last ditch effort to describe the overall body of the skyscraper um, as having like a diaphragm in the middle, which in a way negotiates the floor slabs as they go from one direction to the other. Um, and I think it's I think it's a bit bizarre. I mean, it's very strange and interesting that one of the layers would be emollients without the glazing that they contain, you know, because it problematizes whether or what's interior and exterior, and sort of uh, reduces them to a, a sort of sculptural semi envelope, which I think is is far far more interesting than if they were actually glazing um, within them. So I I, I think that the way the circulation was extended to the extent of the slabs to the full width of the body to sort of match the width of the mullions, but also at the same time tapered in a different way was very successful. Um, I'm going to give I'm going to give the circulation a four and the way that it sort of kind of tied it all together in the last step and split the body into a north and a south because you can imagine being on those terraces and this massive uh, wall which separates and creates a variability of conditions within the body of this skyscraper. So I give this circulation a four. Great. And for all that you said that it was almost predetermined from the first stage, mm. turned yeah. around. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So awesome. And um, let's move on to cyberpunkies. Manuel. Uh, 
I'm, I'm thinking about the, the name of the group and the music. Um, No, I think I think the idea of a, a punkiness uh, would be potentially interesting, uh, uh, given the case that uh, the the techniques were dismissed in in every stage. I would I would say that it could have been even more punky, or even more punk, or rebellious on maybe even uh, rebel uh, with its own assumptions. I mean, stage by, by stage, for, for uh, a punk project, it's a, a little bit uh, too directed towards an end. So yeah. uh, I will give it a two. Thank you. Thank you. Andrew? Um, no, I, I think that uh, but my issue with, uh, with how they developed these transformations is that they use division as a means to uh, remove material. Uh, uh, I, I didn't get get that at the first two uh, stages. I saw it on the third uh, or the fourth. I don't know, but um, well, I, I mean, at, at the very least, I, I would have kept in maybe another layer the things that they removed. Uh, it, it's not just communication. I, I mean. Uh, but uh, I, I, don't I, I don't think they uh, embraced the technique of sub subdivision because uh, th this could have been easily done with another technique. Um, but at the same time, I like the I. I I like the building, the, the thing, but so I, I'm I'm apart, I'm thrown apart. But uh, I would give them a three. Okay. It's sort of an average. Marianne. Yeah. So so can I um, can you also isolate the um, the circulation, just because it's not clear to me. Um, okay. Well, even when I'm not, I mean, like I'm, I'm conditioned by the original tree branch uh, move, uh, which uh, surprised me. Uh, but in this case, I have to say that uh, this uh, this circulation seems to be a little bit more uh, interesting to me than the although although there are some elements of impossibility uh, that I would question, but I, I would give it a three. Great, thank you. And lastly, Peter. Yeah, can you turn on the um, mechanical floors? The mechanical slabs. Yeah, yeah, layer one. No, just turn just turn on layer one if you could. I just want to see this the circulation with the slabs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And within those slabs, can you show me which ones are the um, mechanical slabs? Okay, now I have to wait for it to turn. I can't tell if you used the mechanical slabs. No, I don't think you did. Dang it. Well, I was looking, what I was hoping was happening there was that, that the mechanical slabs were causing a schism um, 
with, with within the continuity of the circulation. I think it's this, my same comment is to the, to the previous is that the circulation is the thing which makes a skyscraper possible, right? You know, prior to prior to um, the elevator, you could only build five five floors, and really, like the late 18th century, the elevator was a new technology which permitted Manhattanism and skyscrapers. So it and and it was the continuity. It was the continuity of that circulation um, which allowed the floor plates to replicate. So to make them discontinuous is a radical thing, but to sort of also make them semi-continuous, uh, um, yeah, it's somewhere in between, right? I'd rather, I'd like to see it completely continuous or completely discontinuous. Um, and the discontinuity, if it happened along the mechanical floors, would have been very interesting, but that didn't happen. For that reason, I'm going to give it a three. Um, and the overall project, yeah, like like Mariano mentioned, that first that first tree branch move kind of conditioned all the others, and like Manuel mentioned, it didn't go. It, it could have gone more punk. I think that um, if you turn all the layers on and go to a front view, you worked only you, your transformations were only in one direction, right? Am I right about that? Yeah, I am. A, a, a punk move would have been to to go far more chaotic with it and to sort of make transformations um in the front view as well to a point where there are discontinuities and irrationalities right because the way the, the continuity and the, the sort of fluidity of all of the manipulations to create this overall form is quite it's a bit conventional like the only unconventional move was maybe the first one and the others followed the first so uh, yeah i would I would have liked to see at least one group completely disregard like gravitational continuity and have it just been a sort of explosion of computational elements, right? Um, yeah, that's my overall comment. Good comment. Should we move on to the last one? Los Salvadores of, we're not sure what they're saving, but maybe they know by now. So, Manuel, any final comments? Could you isolate the circulation, please? Okay, thank you. Um, now if we can see the whole thing. Well, uh, yeah, I don't know. I was, maybe I was hoping that the the circulation was going to be in between the mullions and the and the slabs and that would have uh, yeah completed like the ex extroversion of the of sky skyscraper uh, i will give it a three Perfect. Andrew, you know the drill. Yeah. Uh, could you uh, select the malleons? Sorry, no, the, the circulations. And orbit or the rounds. Yeah, just uh, rotate, exactly. Uh, 
and rotate a little bit more. So from, from the front view, it's they go straight up. It's just that I, I, I don't entirely understand what they did with the circulations. Um, which is the best view to see that? Okay. I, I mean, I think I would give it a three. Um, I think that the circulations in relation to the slabs uh, start uh, an idea of a project. I mean, if I get it correctly, uh, the circulations are moved uh, with this, with a form of a pseudo parabola. Uh, like it, it has a, a a curvature in the movement um, that has a different frequency than the one of the slabs uh, and it stretches uh, along the, the height of the tower. I, I think that there's an idea there uh, that it's very uh, tightly related to the, to the technique, which is just to um, differentiate the different components of the building uh, with different frequencies of this uh, movement in the in the uh, with a par parabolic curve, uh, and what's interesting there is that uh, you can start to see it here that even though the slabs produce a very repetitive pattern, and and because of that very indifferentiated. Uh, uh, when the frequencies of the movements of, of the different components uh, at certain moments align uh, or coincide, like for example, uh, I mean, almost but not entirely on this floor, uh, it, it produces certain singular uh, floor plans. Uh, and you can also go to the other extreme no? when they're entirely apart. Um, I think there's a, a, an initial idea for a project that could be interesting. Uh, that is through repetition, uh, produce uh, singular uh, relations between components. Um, but it's very initial. I, I would give it a three. Perfect. Thanks. And Mariano? Yeah, so um, I was originally drawn to or, or uh, attracted to the, uh, uh, the simplicity of the zigzagging and I like the, uh, uh, the, the repetition of the same, uh, the same um, uh, gesture there. And then I felt that that gesture in the, in the operations with the mullion and the, um, the envelope were somewhat undermined. Um, and then with the circulation, my feeling is that the circulation in this case, I, I don't, I don't really understand what is, uh, what is doing. Uh, I see it as too timid, maybe. So I, I am ambivalent. I think I felt that the um, the original uh, operation of zigzagging would um, open up a number of regular re repeated operations that could distort the original, yet preserve some of its qualities and regularities in a very interesting way. But then I think that that tension got uh, a little bit dissolved. So I would give it um, a two to the circulation. Okay. And mm -hmm. final score of the day, Peter. Can you quickly just go through each layer, turn it on and off? Just because uh, I want to be very, yeah. The one, two, three, four. Okay. Yeah, there's the slabs. And then the walls. And then the mullions and then the circulation. Yeah. I have to admit that it's my I have to admit that it's my favorite because it's 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 the most coherent in a way. Um it's 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 taking a very tight building, like which is very um like hyper tight. It, and it's diffusing it. 
and producing a um, multiplicity of uh, conditions which are self-similar at the bottom of the building, but then sort of have similarities as they move to the top. Which, so I think, you know, the circulation doesn't really contribute to that. Um, in a way, I think the circulation is maybe the, maybe the weakest layer in the sense that it's, it's the least coherent in what it's doing. Uh, so I'm going to give, I'm going to give the circulation a three for that. But overall, I think, um, yeah, the, the way that it took the tightness of the building and kind of maintained it, but loosened it into a sort of coherent diffusion and created the, the multiplicity of balconies, which are sort of semi indoor outdoor. Um, I think this is, this has, yeah, the most coherent project. I would say something that could be taken forward and developed into um, like a methodology or a productive principle. Right. I guess if you guys want to stop sharing, we can do any I know comments, ask the guests, ask Zero, ask uh, the students uh, before we move on to the to the announcement, to the big announcement. Hmm. Maybe we can go to the, the, the the announcement and and we can discuss afterwards. I don't know. Yeah. I, I think that uh, I, I think that the expectation for the announcement is uh, doing a some sort of wizardry of silence. Okay. Uh? I'm sharing right while Ciro is presenting. Yep. Perfect. Well, while you do that, uh, I want to congratulate everyone. It's, it's been a nice venue. And, and thank you, um, Joanne and Melissa, for organizing this. I know that you, that you work a lot on it. And, and also Manuel, of course. And congratulations to the students. Um, it's been a nice, a nice uh, discussion and, and work. So, uh, so thanks for that. And also to the jurors. Um, uh, it was fun to see you chatting with one another. Um, so shall I go to the prizes? Yeah, I, I, I think maybe Ciro first, you, you say the, the, who has the, 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 the position and, and then Joanna, you, you go to the slide, so. Okay, huh? perfect. So, the fourth, the fourth, right? The fourth, the yeah. fourth. Yeah. yeah. So the fourth prize is for, and then Joanna goes to it. No? Oh, I thought you were gonna say first. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> I saw. So the fourth, with forty points, uh, and with the technique divide linearly, is for cyberpunkies, Candela, Francisco. Nacho and Nicolás. And they, congratulations. <laughs> and they get uh, each of each of the of the of them gets a set of eight uh, archivos uh, for 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 your collection, for your library. So congratulations to that. Then the third prize with 45 points with scale exponentially goes to all in excess. Juan Cruz, Delfina, Bautista, and Pedro. And they also get the set of eight <laughs> archivos, each of them. Bravo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then very close to that second prize goes with 48 points, with move exponentially goes to fundamentals. Nicolás, Luis Fernando, 
Mauro y Juan Manuel. And then they get the, the set of eight plus complexity and contradiction in architecture by Robert Venturi. And then the first prize, guess who, with 51 points, goes to move parabolically Los Salvadores. Uh, Bruno, Sofia, Camila, and Lola, who are the new ones. So congratulations. Newcomers. <laughs> and, the newcomers, and you get the, the set of eight, and then the leader of New York to share. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's a, is that a commentary on the value of complexity and contradiction versus Delirious New York? The one's first prize and one second? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do, do you agree or you disagree with that? No, I would, I would have to agree, of course. Uh, <laughs> I, um, <laughs> and in defense, in defense yeah. of the fourth prize winners, divide linearly was, I think, by far the, the hardest operation to work with. So they shouldn't feel they should uh, be proud with their that they were able to do something with a very difficult operation, I think. Great. Okay, uh, well, I don't know if we have final remarks or comments. Shuro, uh, Ciro, or Joanna, Melissa, but it's maybe- it's I think they were, all, they were all very like uh, specific and, and attentive. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, perhaps it would have been interesting to see the operations, um, counteracting with one another so to speak and like like if you if you if you were able to some people are laughing so i don't know if i'm saying something funny or, or what no i think they're in the in the same place <laughs> they're in the, in the taller architecture and the, something is happening uh, there <laughs> something is going on it's a different something channel going on. Yeah, yeah. the the presential channel um so um uh no that 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 it would be interesting to 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 maybe develop um, the techniques at each stage, uh, introducing on the one hand, um, a kind of the, the order of that system in itself autonomously, but then also in relation to the previous one and creating a friction. So I, 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 I would like to see more of that. Um, I also wanted to mention that, that I, although it was not really valued, I think by the jurors, I really like the elegance of the, of the all in excess project, uh, but maybe it's because I'm not the juror, I don't know. Uh, but I wanted to, to put some points to that as well. Right. Uh, elegance versus, I don't know what. Um, Okay, maybe we can call it now. It's yeah, I may just want to say thanks everybody for participating, especially the students who are very brave uh, to put themselves out there like this. And hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And it was a good experience to get such great feedback over so concentrated, let's say. Yeah, and well, I don't know, I, I'm seeing the faces of cyberpunkies. If you are punk, you have to own it. I mean, being punk <laughs> is, <laughs> huh? it's not the, you're not a pop star, you know? So, okay. Congratulations, everyone. It was great. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully next time uh, in, the, in the studio space. Thank you, Ciro. Thank you, Joanna, Melissa, Mariano, Peter, Andrew, and, and especially thank you to the, to the students that ac accepted this challenge once again and with the incredible enthusiasm and it's been great. So we'll be seeing you next time.
thank, once again, thank you, everybody. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Congratulations. Bye. Thank you. Bye, bye everyone.